and welcome to the Library Connection. I'm Summer Newman Ernest. The library staff and its board would like to thank TV47 for giving us the opportunity to highlight our library and its service to the greater community of Sylacauga. Joining me today, we have royalty, she has a <laughs> crown, uh, Miss Sylacauga 2017, Caitlin McTeer. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know it's a busy time for you, yes. graduating <laughs> and pageants and so much going on, um, but so happy to have you here. For anybody who doesn't know you or hasn't seen you, tell me about your family because I know everybody knows your family. Yes, so my grandparents are Jesse and Priscilla Cleveland and um, Jesse Cleveland was one of our past mayors and also a, a administrator with East Highland and Sylacauga High School and my grandmother also was a librarian at SHS. Yes, I had both of them yes. and then your mom now <laughs> is. Uh, and my mom is Pamela McTeer and she's a business teacher at Sylacauga High School. Right, a long history of educators. Yes, everyone's a teacher. Yeah, everybody <laughs> has had, yeah, as, as a teacher or a principal or in some way, such a wonderful family and well, we are so proud to have you as Miss Sylacauga 2017. You've already done so much here. Uh, before we get into all the pageant stuff though, I know you're winding up your high school career yes. and I want to hear about there's so many things you're involved in activities and honors at Sylacauga High School. Well last year I had the opportunity of serving as a student council president at Sylacauga High School and that was an absolute honor. I've always had the dream ever since I was in middle school. I said mom I think I want to be student council president and I've been able to build myself up through middle school student council and through our high school to be able to become president. Um, I also am a part of Future Business Leaders of America. Um, I get the opportunity to be an officer for them and I've been an officer actually since seventh grade wow. and so um, being able to go with them to state conferences and nationals has been really wonderful. Um, I'm also in the S Club um, which is our athletic organization and FCA which is Fellowship for Christian Athletes so we do a lot of devotionals and really try to work on the spiritual aspect of Sylacauga High School. And the reason you're in S Club and FCA uh, not only that is you're a golfer correct? Yes. <laughs> so you've just finished up golfing season. Yes actually um, we we just finished up golf season. We did very well, both the boys and girls this year. We both made it to second round of the playoffs. Um, this year has been a challenge in the sense that the boys are in the south region and the girls are in the north. Oh my goodness. So the boys were traveling to Troy while we were traveling to Scottsboro. Oh wow. And so completely opposite sides of the state of Alabama, but I'm so thankful that our team did as well as we did this year. Definitely. Well, and I know uh, that these cameras and everything are not anything new to you because you play a big role in, do you call it multimedia or what do you call it at Silicon High School? Because I know you even have a TV show there, right? Yeah, so I'm a part of Silicon High School Journalism, which by definition really is multimedia publications. And so I've had the awesome opportunity of serving as the producer of Aggie TV for the past two years, along with Levi Parker for one semester. Semester. And so, um, you know, it's been really awesome being able to have the opportunity to do video production on a daily basis. We make our own daily television show, Aggie TV. And um, I'm not really part of the other parts of multimedia publications, but we also publish the yearbook, the Sahiskin, um, our the Silicaga Highlights, which is the newspaper. We update the school website, the display screens. We live stream all of the games, um, the announcement sheet. It just goes on and on, the amount of responsibilities that That's our a full-time job, I know, right there. And to be able to learn that in high school, because oh, yeah, when definitely. I went off to Auburn, I did mass communications, and I had never operated cameras or anything, <laughs> because we didn't have that oh, at yeah. that time. And so to have that experience, you're already going to be head, in, uh, head above everybody else uh, when you get into that program. Uh, one reason that we wanted to have you, besides your beauty and your talent well, and all of you. your awards, is that you are helping out the library staff at B.B. Comer Memorial Library. You've been training them yes. uh, as of late. Tell us about that. So I've had the opportunity to go over to the library for a few days and train them in iMovie. Um, one of my responsibilities as producer of IETV at the high school is to train the middle school students at Nichols Lawson because they've started making their own um, bi-weekly television show and so I was able to get connected with Miss Tracy Thomas when she was there last year right. and um, so she contacted and reached out to me you know a month ago and asked if I could try to help the women at the library learn how to use iMovie so it's been such a great um, chance to be able to get to know them a little bit better and to be able to help them
similar in iMovie. And you're 18. Are you 18 yet? 17. 17. I wish so I was 17 18. year old <laughs> is training our wonderful staff right now. Uh, and how, yeah, I'm not even really that familiar with it. How could they use iMovie at the library or what, what would they use that for? Well, initially, you know, they came to me and they explained how they could ask me to make some projects for them video wise, <laughs> um, for them to put on social media, to promote some of their speakers that are coming in, especially over the summer. There's so many wonderful library programs that are happening, especially right. for the children of our community. And so they, you know, they explained to me that they could have me just come in and make some videos for them. But honestly, it'd be more helpful for them to learn how to be able to edit film there by themselves. Definitely. And so that they can make videos whenever they need it, especially when I'm about to go off to college. De soon. Yeah, you're leaving us. <laughs> so, yeah, they need to know how to do it. And so is that a challenge? How does that, because you were used to working with the middle student, our middle school students, but now you're working with older <laughs> people, people older than you. How does that work? Is it intimidating or? It's not very intimidating. Um, it, I think it's kind of fun um, going from teaching high school students to teaching middle school students is a challenge. Uh, the focus, <laughs> yes, the attention. Um, right. All of the girls there at Nichols Law Center are sweet and I love them to death, but sometimes getting their it's attention, trying, keeping them focused <laughs> can be very difficult. I don't right. have that problem with the, the adults. No, no, no by, they are good by students. Any means. Good to report, <laughs> yes, right? And, but, you know, you know, at least students, you know, they're kind of used to that type of technology. And right. when I refer to, you know, certain icons or applications, they kind of understand what I'm talking about. Right. But, you know, sometimes with, you know, the older generation, you know, they're not as used to this type of high, high tech technology that right. we're having nowadays. So it can be a little challenging trying to explain everything because you have to go so step the by step. A little different, uh, you right. know, having to explain everything very specifically and write it down. Um, right. But, you know, it's, it's been a great opportunity to be able to work with well, them. Well, we are so thankful at the library to have you. It's a role reversal of sorts, <laughs> the students teaching uh, the adults. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, Caitlin. When we come right. back, I want to focus on Miss Lacaga, upcoming Miss Alabama pageant, and all of your wonderful activities and honors. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Shawnee McNeil at South First Bank. This is a great time for you to buy or build a new home, or maybe refinance your present mortgage. Our rates are the lowest they've been in years, and that means saving you money. We've been helping our customers become homeowners in this area for nearly 70 years, and we can make our approvals right here in the office, and that means saving you time. We're located here in downtown Sylacauga. Come in and find South First, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. At Marble City Pharmacy, we're more than just a drugstore. Our gift shop boasts some of the most unique treasures you'll find anywhere. Come in and browse the vast selection of jewelry, purses, clothing accessories, and crafts. Let our friendly staff help you find that special card or gift for any occasion. Our dollar wall features selected sale items, and we stock a wide variety of specialty items. And if it is a drugstore you need, Marble City Pharmacy was named the 2015 McKesson National Pharmacy of the Year. Visit us today at Marble City Pharmacy. Connect to nature. Connect to family. Camping World is here to help you make lasting memories. With thousands of parts and accessories available, service nationwide and RVs as low as $109 a month, Camping World has it all. Now is your time to connect to excitement with savings on thousands of RVs. Plus, enjoy Good Sam Elite membership with every RV purchase. Visit your local Camping World Supercenter or shop CampingWorld.com today. The Allen Companies of Sylacauga with three locations to serve you. Highway 511, Highway 280, and Main Avenue. For all your convenience store needs, ice, drinks, snacks, and of course some of the lowest priced gasoline at the pumps. It's the Allen Companies of Sylacauga. Highway 511, Highway 280, and Main Avenue. It's the Allen Company convenience stores. Hello and welcome back to the Library Connection. I'm Summer Newman Ernest. Joining me today is Miss Caitlin McTeer, Miss Lacaga 2017. We've talked about her family uh, and I know Miss Priscilla is actually a library board member or has been in the past uh, and your recent training with the library staff. We're so very thankful to have you working with our staff so hopefully we can learn the latest technology. Uh, of course you're Miss Lacaga but you've had a long history <laughs> uh, with other titles and title holders. Tell me about your experience I know most recently with Distinguished Young Woman, which most people probably fondly remember as Junior Miss. Yeah, so for the past year, I had the opportunity to represent Tottega County as your Tottega County Distinguished Young Woman. And so I got to go to the state program in January, and that was 
absolutely so much fun um, with 48 other girls representing counties all the way across our state. And so that program, you know, we don't have a county program here in Talladega, so I had to go to the at-large program last July with other counties that did not have programs. And so from there, you know, we had about 13 girls that went from that local preliminary to the state program. And I had, um, I was so blessed to be able to receive top eight, yes. um, top five interview, talent, and self-expression. And so that was so much uh, of an honor and to be able to get the scholarship money as well was great. <laughs> Definitely. Well, we were so proud of you as a uh, junior miss. I know it paid for my college, so uh, very thankful for that. And you did represent us so very well. And it's a wonderful well, opportunity you. to meet young women who are all your age. And I'm sure you will see some of them when you oh, go yes. off to college. I'm still friends with many of them. And then before that, I know you participated in Miss Alabama Outstanding Team, which we are always so pleased every year at the library to host uh, the ladies that mm -hmm. come in for their orientation and it's actually held here in Sylacauga and so how many years did you do that? I did outstanding teen for four years. Wow. Um, I started out as actually I did I I'd competed when I was 12 because I was eligible to do that for Miss Sylacauga's outstanding teen the year Caitlin Vincent won and so I competed that full year. I actually competed 11 times Wow. Did not win one preliminary and went at large. And a lot of people are like, how did you make it through all of that? Uh, competing 11 times it may seem easy from no. an outsider's perspective, <laughs> no. but when you're traveling as a 13-year-old uh, with your family That's across the state almost every other weekend right. for a preliminary, it, it can be really difficult. And so there's a lot of times where it was easy to get down on myself, but you know, my mom and my family was able to encourage me and to keep on going. And even though I never took a title home that year, I was able to gain so much experience and the interview practice and just being on stage. And I really feel like that year of just having to do so many preliminaries is what got me to you know where I am now. And so after that, you know, I competed in Miss Alabama South Sending Teen. Um, I went on the next year, I won Miss Silicaga's Outstanding Teen, so I got to represent uh, my hometown for a year. And then I won Miss Tuscaloosa's Outstanding Teen, and that was a lot of fun. My favorite event was being able to be in the University of Alabama Homecoming Parade. Fun. And that was, that was ex really exciting. And then my last year of Outstanding Teen, I was Miss Tennessee Valley's Outstanding Teen. And so being Miss Tennessee Valley, I absolutely loved the directors that I had. But making that two and a half hour hike to Florence Muscle Shoals oh, area goodness. for appearances and for practice was a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but um, wouldn't trade the group of people that I met um, and the people that were able to influence me for the world. And then you did well, extremely well, at Alabama's Outstanding Team that year too. Yeah, um, that year I was able to make the top 10 and I also got the Evening Wear and On Stage Question Preliminary Award. Well, it's just been such a privilege to see you grow and develop into this beautiful young woman, such poise and talent and maturity and dedication. Well, and uh, and that's not something that you always see. And so I know that you serve as a role model to so many and will continue to do so. I want to talk about, uh, obviously, you were crowned Miss Sulacaga mm -hmm. a few months ago, yes. 2017. And we're going to get to because there's been a date change. Mm -hmm. We actually have another pageant coming up uh, to actually crown another Miss Sulacaga. But you'll be going off to Miss Alabama yes. uh, in a short amount of time. And probably when this airs on TV, you will actually be there, those okay. dates. When do you leave for Miss, uh, Miss Alabama? Um, the Sunday, June, to... I know the, the, um, the actual program is 7th through 10th, yeah, so 10. there's a Wednesday, Thursday, okay. Friday, and a Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. yeah, four opportunities yes. to see you, right? Yeah, so I'll be competing for four nights on Wednesday. I'll be doing evening wear. Um, in self, sorry, excuse me, in swimsuit production. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, I'll be doing my talent, and Friday, I will be doing swimsuit and on-stage question. My goodness, and then the finals, I know, of are course. Saturday, and that's all at Sanford, and we were talking about just getting ready for that week mm -hmm. of Miss Alabama. It's exhausting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> long time ago, I remember that. In fact, 20 years ago, um, but there's so much, because it's not just preparing for the production. There's appearances, there's so autograph sessions, on. there's so much going on, um, but what a wonderful opportunity I assume that you'll probably be the youngest or one of the youngest. Yes, I, I'm the youngest girl in the Miss Alabama pageant. I will be the only 17-year-old there um, competing with many 24-year-old uh, amazing women who have already graduated from graduate, have graduate degrees and are teachers wow. and are in the workforce. So um, it's great that even though, you know, I am young, 
I am able to still look up to some of those um, girls that are older than me and that can influence me as well. So I'm just excited. I'm going to go have fun and it'll be a good experience for me. It is going to be a great experience, I know. And we're so excited that you're actually representing us this year as a 17 year old. <laughs> so very proud of you. Um, so at the uh, pageant, of course, you do a talent. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your talent. You don't have to tell us the exact song, but uh, what do you do for your talent? Well, I am a vocalist. Um, one of the greatest parts of growing up here in Silicaga is I had some outstanding voice coaches. You know, I had Miss Susie Hammonds and Miss Comer. And wow. so having both of them, you know, they really gave me a great foundation in singing. And so this year, I mean, I'm not afraid to say what I'm singing. Yeah, most people do. already know. <laughs> um, I'll be singing I Know Where I've Been from Hairspray. Oh, and uh, this one of the songs that Queen Latifah sings. And I wish I could sound like Queen Latifah. Oh, <laughs> no, you do. You do. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I would just... I aspire, you know, to sound like her, but the song has so much emotion and so much power with it, and the words have some such great meaning behind it, and so um, I'm excited to be able to perform that for the audience, and hopefully I can draw them into the story that I'm trying to take them on. Well, when you just shine on stage anytime <laughs> you're on stage, so I'm excited to see that, uh, and along with Miss Sulacaga and even uh, as uh, Alabama Outstanding Team Program, a platform mm -hmm. that all of the contestants have a platform. What is yours? My platform is Caitlin. Cubby, um, Feeding a Child, Feeding a Mind, Fighting Hunger, and I actually started it when I was in the seventh grade, and it started um, from a situation that I had in the fourth grade. I had a best friend that was unable to afford snack, and so, you know, I started sneaking food out of the house, <laughs> and my mom was wondering, where is all this food going? Why is my child eating so much food? <laughs> and, you know, eventually, you know, uh, she confronted me about it. I was like, what's happening? And I, I said, you know, my friend, she doesn't have snacks, so I'm bringing her some food out of the house. And, you know, that was the first time that I realized that hunger wasn't something that was just happening across seas or a commercial that I right. saw, um, but it was something that was happening at home. And so, you know, I was able to be able to help the girl that I was going to school with. And so from there, I did a few little canned food drives, donated, you know, they always have drives, especially sure. during like football season, to be able to give to the care house or safe. And so I, I started donating a lot more, um, realizing that it, it really did affect the people here in Sulacaga. And so when I did that, um, I knew that I wanted to make that my platform when I started out seeing teen in the seventh grade. And so I actually was able to partner with Alabama Childhood Food Solutions. And many people know um, Food Solutions now because they're such a huge um, right. nonprofit organization here in our community. But at the time, we were only feeding uh, probably just a few schools in the area. We were in a small little storage house over by Nichols Lawson. It took us maybe like an hour to pack up all the food for a week wow. for kids. And over the past few years, I've been able to grow with them and um, be able to continue to pack bags for students at my school um, and also be able to help do some of the stuff at the distribution center to be able to send out food to different schools and to be able to help um, adults because they now have the distribution days for adults to be able to come through twice a month. All right. What a difference you're making and here in your community and that's something that like you said you don't think about you see these commercials oh, yeah. or you think this is in a third world country but not right here in our community that people are hungry. Oh yeah. Uh, and to be able to do that and to grow with them uh, what a wonderful platform and, and a difference that you've made so far, and I know you'll continue to do that. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about the upcoming Miss Lilacaga pageant uh, as well as your other activities. Hi, it's Shawnee McNeil at South First Bank. This is a great time for you to buy or build a new home or maybe refinance your present mortgage. Our rates are the lowest they've been in years, and that means saving you money. We've been helping our customers become homeowners in this area for nearly 70 years, and we can make our approvals right here in the office, and that means saving you time. We're located here in downtown Sylacauga. Come in and find South First, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. At Fort Williams Pharmacy, you won't find motor oil, garden hoses, or mountain climbing gear. Nope, they don't have that. What they do have is a professional, friendly staff that understands your needs. Filling prescriptions is their primary business and they take it seriously. They also have a drive through window for your convenience and free local delivery. Most of all, Fort Williams Pharmacy knows your time is valuable, so when it's time to fill your prescriptions, you need it done fast, friendly, and accurately. Fort Williams Pharmacy, our family, caring for your family. Connect to nature. Connect to family. Camping World is here to help you make lasting memories. With thousands of parts and accessories available, service nationwide and RVs as low as $109 a month, Camping World has it all. Now is your time to connect to excitement. 
with savings on thousands of RVs. Plus, enjoy Good Sam Elite membership with every RV purchase. Visit your local Camping World Supercenter or shop CampingWorld.com today. Coosa Valley Medical Center, one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama, is also Silicaga's largest employer. Services from the emergency room to surgery to cancer treatment to post-stroke care. You won't believe what's right in your backyard. It's Coosa Valley Medical Center in Silicaga. So, if you're sick, in Alabama, choose one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama. That is Coosa Valley Medical Center. Hello, and welcome back to the Library Connection. I'm Summer Newman Ernest. Joining me today, Miss Silicaga 2017, among other things, uh, <laughs> Caitlin McTeer. She's winding up her high school career, busy helping our library staff, training them, which we're so very thankful for. Going to be going off to Miss Alabama to compete. And then at the end of June, we have Miss Silicaga again, yes. which I know everybody's going to be surprised because they're used to it being in January or February, but we've moved the date. Why, why did they do this? Well, honestly, with the Miss Alabama pageant being in June and the um, Miss Silicaga preliminary being in January, it honestly does not give our girls anywhere close no. to the amount of time that they need to prepare, especially when our first orientation is the first week of March. So honestly, you have one a month, weeks, yeah. uh, a few weeks to be able to get, you know, basic stuff taken care of and paperwork and then you're just thrown into all of this different stuff and especially when we want Miss Silicaga to be a local girl and most of them haven't, you know, been to the Miss Alabama pageant before. Right. It can be super overwhelming trying to pull all that off in four months buying the outfits, the dresses, uh, right. you know, And it puts you at a disadvantage because the, so many of the other oh, winners yeah. have had an entire year. Yeah. To prepare for it and yes. so um, and so I know that's on the committee that's one reason that we decided so you have Miss Alabama uh, June 10th and then the new Miss Silicaga will be crowned June 25th so yes. a big date change that's a Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of preliminaries are nowadays especially during the summer I guess you don't have school to worry about so yes. June 25th at 5 p.m. at Silicaga High School uh, and there have been some changes this year for instance in Miss Silicaga it was not an open preliminary but open to 50 whom? mile radius. Yeah, about a 50 mile radius. Uh, even though we still have, we are so happy to <laughs> have a Silicaga girl to represent us. But um, so that means technically you could be from Shelby County, Tallapoosa County, Clay County, mm -hmm. the surrounding areas uh, and enter Miss Silicaga. Yes. And then Miss Marble Valley, which are Miss Marble Valley this year, Sammy Rizzuto. Uh, it's, it's a neat story about her. She goes to Auburn, but she's actually yes. from where? New Jersey. New Jersey. Yes. We have a New Jersey girl uh, that is uh, representing us. And so that particular preliminary is open statewide to any. Mm -hmm. uh, young lady who lives in the state or goes to school in the state and so um, so what is the theme for Miss Silicaga this year? This year's theme is on Broadway mm -hmm. and Exciting. so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what numbers we're gonna have but hopefully I mean you would think it would be Broadway numbers, Broadway right? <laughs> I mean so especially with Sammy and I being singers you know I think we're both gonna try to perform some um, Broadway selections throughout the show to you know for entertainment value and so I think it's gonna be a great show you know. It really is and so so I'll mark your calendars and then if you know of someone who yes. is interested in participating, uh, they can go ahead and pick up those packets oh, at yes, the rec, definitely. through Jim Armstrong or online uh, and go ahead and get uh, involved in it. Because I know as soon as Miss Alabama is over, there's a whole group of women who are ready to compete again to do definitely. it all over. And I, I hope uh, if for some reason you are not crowned Miss Alabama, <laughs> which that would be crazy, uh, I know that you will be. I tell your grandmother all the time and grandfather that I know that you will be. Um, Tell me about scholarships, because I know that's one of the main reasons that these young ladies do the Miss America program. Oh, yes, um, definitely. I mean, in the Miss Alabama program by itself, we're known for giving out some of the mo some of the highest amount of scholarships in the United States uh, by a state program. And so by Miss America rules, every single local preliminary is required to at least give $100 in scholarships. And most preliminaries go above and beyond. Right. Um, and like the Miss Lilacaga program, I know I got over $2,000 in scholarships scholarships just for you know winning this right. local preliminary right. and then going to Miss Alabama as well we automatically will get either 700 or 750 dollars just for being participating in, right. in Miss Alabama right. um, and then of course you know if you win preliminary awards or if you end up placing higher 
you'll still get more money. But also there's a scholarship interview, which is really exciting. Um, and you basically sit down with a scholarship panel and you explain the needs you have and you know your financial situation and then they try to you know give you more money based off of your situation to be able to go to college. Right, in the specific school. And so I think that's one thing that maybe people don't realize when they see a Miss America on oh, TV yeah. is that <laughs> brightest young women that you can imagine, like you said, many of them are going on and paying for their graduate oh, degrees yeah. with uh, scholarship monies from here and so uh, I know that you've gotten so many scholarships through that and other ways what are your plans and where are you going to school well I'm so excited <laughs> um, I'll be going to the University of Alabama in the fall to major in telecommunications and film okay and so with that what do you anticipate I know you're only 17 what would you like for your career path to be or what would you like to do during college well or or after, after graduation, graduation. When you graduate, yeah. well I would like to be a executive producer a director of a daily news show um, and I know it will be extremely hectic and going into the news um, field can be very difficult especially I mean it's a high demand job you're sure. constantly being moved around but I've always had a passion for being able to edit and film and be able to direct so I'm excited to try to transfer what I've done in high school over into the real world. Well I know that you'll be extremely successful and one thing we were talking about uh, how very bright you are is that technically you are already almost a sophomore is that yes. right? <laughs> how, how did this happen? So one of the greatest things I feel like has ever uh, happened in our educational systems is dual enrollment and so students have the opportunity at Sulacaga High School to dual enroll at Central Alabama Community College, the University of Alabama and next year they're adding Jacksonville State University wow. and so I decided for the past year to be able to do um, dual enrollment and so basically I'm dual enrolled through the University of Alabama and Central Alabama Community College and so between those two institutions and my one AP class that I was able to club with the qualifying score of a three I already have 27 college credits. Wow. Wow. And your mom is so happy about that. Right? How much money are you saving? What a great thing. Uh, uh, just so well-rounded. Well Thank you. Um, so let's go over those dates again. Mm -hmm. For the Obviously, you'll be at Miss Alabama in a few weeks, but for the upcoming Miss Silicaga, and I guess it'll be Miss Silicaga 2018. Yeah. Yeah, even though it's still <laughs> 2017. So it's been a short reign for you, yes. but we're still going to see you, and I know you're going to come back uh, from Tuscaloosa. But Miss Marble Valley and Miss Silicaga, and what is that date again? On June the 25th. June 25th. 25th at 5, at 5 o'clock, Sylacauga High School. It's a Sunday afternoon. Uh, the Miss Sylacauga portion is open to anyone in a 50-mile radius. The Miss Marble Valley to the entire state, and yes. you can apply for that now and fill out all of your paperwork um, because we want to have a huge group. Uh, and also to be able to see you and Sammy there performing on Broadway. <laughs> so it's going to be a wonderful production. And of course, we'll be able to see you in Miss Alabama. Where is that held? Where is Miss Alabama? At Sanford University. And so do you stay there as well? Yes. Sam so you're there the whole time. Uh, there will be multiple performances Wednesday starting June 7th all the way to that Saturday to see <laughs> the youngest participant, uh, our Miss Silicaga, Caitlin McTeer. Uh, thank you so much for contributing to the library staff, for training them. I want to quickly mention, of course, we have our upcoming summer reading series, which will be going on through the months of June and July. Make sure that you bring your kids. A wonderful opportunity. So many wonderful things going on at the library. Caitlin, thank you so so much for joining us and we hope to see more of you as you come back uh, from Tuscaloosa and uh, and just can't wait to see what the future holds for you well thank you for having me